just about sailing March 2019 and this is the March one even if it does come out in April but hopefully I'll manage to get it out a little bit before that. So let's get on with it. This will hopefully be the actual installation of the diesel heater. As I always say this is not a DIY channel in as much as I'm not showing you how to do things I'm just showing you how I've done it. So thanks for all the comments from the last one where I was looking at where to actually position it very very useful if you are thinking of doing a similar job yourself do read all the comments and if you have done something yourself already then do comment as to a better way of doing it and so on um, yeah okay well I, I had to order some bits I think I said that I was expecting that the heater itself costs about 100 and whatever it was 160 pounds and I thought I would have to spend about the same again on getting the ancillary bits <coughs> the sort of boat specific I actually spent quite a bit more than that I think it was just over, over 200 pounds but well worth it so this is probably the key thing which is a the, the sort of through hole with this sort of the, the exhaust with a sort of double layer and it's at a particular angle because of the way Serenity's stern works so tracked one of those down I've got um, as I said I probably would a marine style um, stainless steel exhaust rather than the one that came uh, with it probably a bit of overkill but I've got some clip I've only ordered three actually I've forgotten I need these these are to clip the um, the hose on uh, loads of loads of hose probably got too much here but um, or, or too little it'd be one or the other won't it uh, some some decent stainless exhaust stuff not better than the stuff I'm doing with it I actually forgot to order any more of this is the um, the sort of the breather pipe, the air intake for the actual combustion chamber. But given that I'm not using the old exhaust stuff and it's about the same size, I might simply link these together and that will be that will be plenty. Whoops. Um, I've got some heat deflecting stuff um, to to go underneath where the exhaust is going. This is from a this is sort of all chemical and whatever proof it's from a car. A uh, great suggestion that to actually mount the plate on some rubber, so I've got some nitrile rubber on this to try and cut down on the vibrations. This didn't come with any um, heat proof uh, gaskets, so I've got some gasket material, what else have I got? Oh, I've got some exhaust sealing stuff and I've got some ultra heat uh, silicone, probably got some other things. Oh, and these, these are... <laughs> they look like leg warmers from the 1970s, don't they? This is to go round uh, this heat ducting on the way out from the outlet into the cabin to stop the heat loss. And I think that should be plenty long enough. Um, so, yeah, obviously we don't want the heat escaping into the engine compartment. Well, there's no point. So there we go. That's what I've got, I think. Yep. And um, probably not everything. I'm still waiting on a few bits, but enough to actually get it installed, get it up and working. Let's head off to the boat and see what happens. Right, so the irony of fitting a heater on a day that's so warm in February that I have to wear a t-shirt has not escaped me. Uh, it's time to drill a hole and fit this. What I've decided is to kind of do it about halfway between here and here. Um, the lower down, the more chance of water going in. The higher up, the less of it. Uh, with a sort of curve I've got at the top. I need it to be in between here and in between the centre, which is where the wooden uh, blade is for the steering vane. So I'm just going to guess and kind of do it roughly in the middle. I've checked it from the inside. The problem is that there's a slope on this, so... I don't know. I'm going to drill a little hole, then straighten it out, and then see what happens. And this would, this would normally be up, by the way, but I do want to kind of get it out of the way a little bit. That'll do. Right, so I've made a start. Now I want to try and keep this horizontal. Fingers crossed time.
tied the ladder up. Right, now I want to take all credit for the fact that it's not going to get cold again now I'm putting this heater in. What I've got to do here is I want to put some, a bit of gasket on the inside of this. But because there's this curve, I've got to kind of cut it around in a circle. I tried it with a straight bit and of course it, it, it doesn't work because there's a, a kind of gap there. Now I'm sure there's a mathematical way of figuring this out, but I'm just going to guess and cut a few different shapes. So I've got plenty of material and see what fits. Okay, so that was the first curve. That one's the second one. And to my mind, I can barely see this because the sun is so bright. That seems to fit in there quite nicely. Because I do want to have a layer between this and the hull. So that will give me a nice. I don't. A lot of people I don't think do that, but I don't know. Just don't like the idea of. And there is a there is a gap here. I don't like the idea of all that hot gas going out right next to the fiberglass. But I'm sure it'll be all right. Okay, I know what you're thinking. It's actually a compound curve, and I was using uh, Cartesian geometry, whereas I should have been using Euclidean geometry and kind of made it into an S shape a little bit, like the ecliptic going around the Earth. There we are. Easy mistake to make. Schoolboy error. Let's um see if that will fit. There we are, given that it's kind of guesswork that's a fairly good fit because obviously the key thing is to keep this going parallel through whilst also catering for the slope and the fact that it's a kind of uh, two different ellipses offset on either side of the thickness of the hull so yeah right let's just um, <laughs> apart from anything else I'm just going to stick loads of heat proof silicon on it so to be quite honest I could have stuck any old thing in there. Right I have no idea if that was the way I was supposed to do it but it's in there it's got plenty of very high temperature silicon around it. it needs a bit of a clean up. Uh, from my point of view the good news is that this um, the exhaust slopes slightly upwards. My worry was that it might be slightly downwards which would result in water pooling so if any water does get in there at least it is going to drain out. So I think and hope that was the most difficult part of the process. Uh, let's go and do the rest now and prove me wrong. Right, so probably unsurprisingly this is where I've decided to mount to mount it. It's by far the easiest access, um, which is important for both maintenance and the fact that I'm not as mobile as I used to be. Um, and you might be able to see that I've actually put some, I put the rubber in behind there. So thanks for the suggestion. I do appreciate suggestions. And always remember that I'm just doing this the way I'm doing it. If you're thinking of doing a job like this yourself, do read the comments because there's lots of people who watch this channel who know an awful lot more than I do. So the next task, I think, is to get the um, exhaust in. And I'm not 100% sure exactly where I'm going to put it. And then start to link up some of the tubes. This is just a dry fit. I've put um, some exhaust on there with quite um, an extra length to kind of keep it away from everything. This is much higher quality than the stuff that came with the heater. Um, the actual silencer is going there and then there should be plenty of room for me to do a nice tall loop of the exhaust around there. So this, this hurts this. I'm not designed to bend in the directions I need to for this. Right, so this is the outlet thing, and I want it to be down there. And it's just ever so slightly wide, too wide. So I'm going to cut into a bit of this, but I think that's going to be right now. I shall strengthen it up later. And I don't want to have it too low, so I'm going to put the pipe in first. And see, whoops. Let's see how well it fits. And I think. I've probably got... <laughs> Did I order meters instead of feet here? I'm not sure what's... I've got loads of this stuff. Anyway, let's have a look and see how this works. Right, well this seems to fit in. There's plenty of space for it to go down to the front there. And I do have the clips, which I probably won't put on today. 
I might do that as a sort of finishing off exercise. I do have the clips, but yeah, so far so good. There seems to be space to put all of this stuff. And this is definitely the best position because although it's difficult, the other places would have been much more difficult to put things in. So let's go and drill the hole where it's going to come out into the cabin. Actually, I can put this down a little bit lower than I thought, which is good. Um, it's very close to where the water pipes go through, but it's close but not touching. And I'm going to put the... Now I think this is going to be all right, actually, and that, and that means it's lower down. And, yeah. It's... Right, so that's kind of going to go there. the wood. Alright, I really do expect too much out of that little drill. This is the big one. Right, I have a hole. Will this fit through? Wow. Will this go on the back? Wow. Obviously, a bit. Where is it? So. There you go. That fits in there. But you can see that's the steps. And there's the heater outlet coming out, I would say, pretty much in the ideal position. So. <laughs> I shouldn't sound surprised when I do this stuff, should I? But I, I always am surprised. God, there's a lot of mess to clear up. That will happen. I think there's going to have to be some finishing of jobs videos coming up soon because I'm, I'm sort of halfway through several jobs at the moment. Right. Now I've got the exhaust, the rest of the exhaust sitting out there. I don't need all of that. Let's see if I can do a test fit of that. Right. So, cramped again behind the engine. Here's the exhaust and I've got it to kind of twist up there and get far enough back and then back there and what I'm going to do you can see there's various bolts and things I'm going to fix a, some brackets on there so that it holds this hot exhaust which obviously I want I'm not going to put any um, insulation around it because I want the heat to dissipate and I can link something onto one of those bolts that comes through there so I think that'll work nicely and it's it goes up high enough and everything is looking good but i've just about wrecked myself for today so i shall finish this and <laughs> hopefully get this video out before the end of the month i do want to test it i don't want to go to a part three with this one but ouch i think all the hurty bits are done now very pleased that the way all that's gone on right so did i say all the crawling around was over yesterday the painful bit no, it wasn't, but now I've, I've put the insulation stuff around uh, the conduit that goes out to the cabin. I've put the exhausts on properly in as much as I've put the, um, the exhaust paste on and tightened them up. I've put the inlet tube in um, temporarily. Uh, I haven't attached that silver foil. That's the sort of heat reflective stuff that you normally put underneath a car bonnet. That's not glued on because I'm going to make some changes. So this really is sort of first fix. Um, and then I'm going to put the inlet onto this end. And I'm not sure where that's going at the moment, but I shall probably make another hole through here. I, I shall change all this basically. But I just want to um, now get it wired up, get the fuel to it and see what happens. Um, I probably won't do a big test today because it's too warm to be quite honest. Um, but I will probably, because I want to get this video out, so I'll probably do a test later on, but I want to make sure that it works and have a look at what the power consumption is and stuff like that. So let's get the, uh, the fuel sorted out next, I think. So what I've done is I've just made up a board um, with a fuel tank on it, uh, the fuel filter, diesel filter, and I've got a better one than that, this is just temporary, and the pump. And I'm probably going to just put this in the cockpit lock locker and then take the line from here, so as I say. Temporary because I might because certainly I'm going to use proper 
diesel hose will actually do the, the do it for real. And I'm probably going to get a 10 litre tank, but I might actually just take it out of the main fuel tank. I'm not quite sure about that. So, right, let's hook this up, and then it's the electrics. Right, and the wiring loom comes with absolutely tons and tons and tons and tons of cable with different fittings depending on what you're plugging in. So as I say, again this is going to be a bit temporary, so let's plug this in. I'll give you a quick overview of what we've done. And then let's actually uh, see if it will fire up. Right, so I've got this um, fuel system here just in the locker. And I've got fresh air intake poking out of the um, port light at the moment. I'll show you that inside. I'm not for a minute advocating that this is the way it's going to be. So anyway, the wiring was so simple to do. And again, I'm not advocating that you <laughs> lead your wiring in through here. But anyway, let's, let's start the thing up. Right. So I've wired it into my ammeter and I'm going to... Um, Press record on the this camera and then wander around with a fake GoPro. So let me just press start. Did that start? Yeah, so you can see the fan thing is whirling around. Uh, taken quite a lot of amps because I th one of these things means that the glow plug I think is kicking in. I think the glow plug kicks in first and then at some point we should see the, um, the fuel pump kick in. Now obviously if this is going to take for ages then I'm, I'm going to kind of cut forward a little bit. But that's quite a high ampage isn't it? 8.6 amps. And I've, I've got no idea what temperature or anything I've set it on, to be quite honest. I shall read the instruction manual and figure out how to do all of that stuff. Oh, I can, I can hear the fuel pump. Is there? Oh, yeah, there's a little sign saying the fuel pump's come, come on. I don't know if you can hear that. It's not very loud, but then again, it is out in the locker. So I would expect... I don't know if you can hear when it's ignited. Or does it just get hot? No, it feels a bit warm actually. I wasn't expecting that so quickly. All oh, right, the amps are going down quite considerably now. I think it's figured out it's warm enough for the heater on its own to be on. I thought I'd be able to hear it combusting, but obviously not. So I'm going to leave this on and I'm going to go and feel and see what the exhaust feels like. Right, I'm assuming you can feel that. That's hot-ish. That's okay there. That's, okay. that's great. That's interesting. That's not hot at all. Yeah, there's a huge difference between this bit of metal on the outside and that bit on the inside. I meant to get one of those temperature measuring things, but yeah, there's a lot of, that's a lot of wasted heat actually, because there's a lot of heat coming out of there. But that is, that is a lot of heat. I bet go and actually have a look and see what the are doing inside. I think they're all right. Yeah, that's that's stonking hot. That's really, really hot. You wouldn't want to have a, a dinghy tied up here or a fender in the way. Right, 
just go and see what it's like on the inside. Well actually even just walking inside here I can feel that's quite a draft. I don't know if they've got these paper or something. As I say quite a draft. I think it's lovely. here you can see. <laughs> Here's the ultimate test. Will it blow a glove up? And yes it will. You know, that's that's the um so obviously we're test these. That's really quite hot coming out there. As I say, I think I've probably got it turned on maximum, but that's absolutely fine. And the it's running at 2.8 amps. That's still quite a lot. But I have got plenty of time to sort of debug this and figure out what's what's going on. Anyway. Let's do a stop now, and I will do a proper taste test later with thermometers and stuff, but I really need a cold day to do it properly. So we're about, we're about nine minutes in, it's heated up considerably here, um, quite a lot of current draw, it's, well I suppose 2.8, that's, that's, I don't know how bad that is, I'll, I'll look up and see what it, what it should be but I don't have the time to finish off this test now and I do want to post this video so let's press the off button off it says uh, and it's got some sort of oh, you can hear the fan going down and as I say I think I've probably got it on maximum so Easy peasy, lemon easy so far. So I don't really know what to say except um, 160 quid plus about 200 for the other bits. So 360 all in. I think that's pretty good. Um, and this is so this is going to heat the boat up. No problem. I don't. <laughs> I don't know if that's pushing out two kilowatts or five kilowatts or what was going on. Um, I need to double check what the what the amps are doing because it does that does seem like quite a heavy current draw. But anyway, um, let's let that cool down. Right there we go. So it's literally just switched off. That was so easy and it kicks out such a lot of um, warmth. I need to read the instruction manuals. I need to figure out what the settings are because I think I've got it running on a full blast at the moment. And I'm not sure if I need to do that. Um, and I've got loads of half finished jobs now I'm hoping that April will be a much more productive month because although it took me a long time to get these videos out the actual job itself didn't take very long um, I've, I've had a revisit of the problems that happened late last year which don't watch the video but the first video in uh, January kind of explained all that stuff but I'm hoping that's going to get sorted out at the end of this month which is March and I've got a whole month off in April, so I'd really like to finish some projects off. So thank you for watching. Do leave comments. Don't copy what I'm doing. And see you in the next one. Cheers.